Alrighty, good day, weebs. I am back after a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, got back from my Japan trip with some mates. Uh, and also went to Comic Cat as well to put my words into practice. Uh, and I felt like I should show you some of what I got at Comic Cat. Um, there'll be a few other videos coming soon um, regarding that group trip and how it went with all the planning and things like that. Uh, plus some special events that happened during the trip. But for now, uh, let's get into it. I can show you some of the more safe work stuff that I got uh, during Comic Cat. Uh, but for now, I thought it would be interesting for everyone uh, to kind of see, like, kind of on the ground what getting into Comic Cat looks like. Uh, there'll be a full kind of VOD review, I guess is one way you would put it, of what it actually is like on the day. Uh, but for now, I think we'll focus on the goods. Uh, this is from day one. This is for the commercial booths. So I'm currently lined up at West uh, 3 and 4. So West Halls 3 and 4, which is where all the commercial booths were. Plenty of, you know, people milling about. And uh, I did get the early access ticket for day one. Uh, early access meant that I could line up uh, in front of everyone else. Um, and I was in right when doors opened at 10.30. Um, usually it's about 10 to 10.30. I think uh, this year was 10.30 from the top of my head. Um, and this is just before doors open. So you can see I'm basically right next to the hall, um, lined up with everyone else. I've already gotten my wristband uh, from the walk-in and uh, I'm just waiting patiently in line uh, to uh, get inside and get my goodies. Um, for reference about, you'll see me start walking in and planning where I go. I use the circle.ms website a lot. That really helps me kind of plan my route, make sure I knew where I was going. Um, and of course I had already kind of mapped out what goods I was going to buy. Uh, so I kind of had a decent idea about what my budget was uh, for Comic Cat. That being said, I did find that this year in particular, I spent a lot more, probably because uh, it's been the first time back to Comic Cat for several years because of COVID. So uh, yeah, I mean, this day went pretty much according to plan since I was at mostly the commercial booths. I do end up going to the uh, Dorjin circles later on. Uh, but for now, I'm mainly visiting the commies, so you think like Aniplex. Mahoyo had a giant booth there. Uh, Visual Arts, uh, who else is like super popular? I don't know, Ufotable. Um, all the big anime studios and some of the actual anime goods stores as well will have booths there uh, to sell, you know, generic anime goods. And usually the big anime studios will generally have uh, exclusive stuff uh, there for purchase. So you really want to make sure if you want those things, which they put up beforehand, um, if you want those things, you should be trying to get early access in that lottery uh, as much as possible. Uh, so we're walking in. Um, I'm a big key fan. So the key um, is a company mostly known for the visual novels. Um, I'm very old school key, so I'm very old school. It's like 20 years ago now. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it was like 2007. Uh, like I really am into Clanad, and I liked Canon as well. Uh, Red Air as well. When the first fan English translations came out, um, not really a fan of the newer stuff, especially the anime stuff. Uh, that came after Clannad, uh, but uh, that's where I'm heading to first, uh, and then I kind of mill about for a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll try and skip forward to when the booths, uh, when I'm actually at the booths, because uh, I do go to quite a few commercial booths uh, once we walk in. Uh, you can see that uh, we're all being kept basically still outside uh, until uh, the doors open, uh, but we are pretty much at the threshold. Um, so you're going to see a lot of people, uh, try to break free as it were and try to run. Uh, but, uh, of course you're, you're not allowed to run. Running is dangerous. You should always walk, walk fast and, uh, be careful of where you're going. Um, don't want any accidents, especially, uh, when you're carrying any goods. Um, so yeah. You can see that a lot of people generally have like their phones out, like I said, for the uh, circle map at circle.ms, as I mentioned before on the foreigner's guide. Uh, that's probably your best bet if you want a small portable way to um, 
have all the circles that you're looking for uh, on a on an accessible device. Uh, it does need internet though. Um, you can, I believe, export the list of circles that you're visiting uh, with days and filters and all that stuff. Uh, but I personally just use the, the online version on the day and that was fine. So that's the, that's the announcement that it's opening. I'll just turn up the volume a little bit on it. So you'll hear this audio sting beforehand. And an announcement. So thanks for waiting. Uh, I'm proud to announce that Comic Cat 103 is open. And uh, you can see everyone's starting to rush in. Uh, very walking, walking, of course, but you know, with purpose. Um, I apologize a little bit for the GoPro footage if it, because it's unstabilized. It's currently on my left shoulder, uh, just to give that nice POV view. Uh, so you can see that there is still kind of queue management as people kind of walk in, uh, because there's only a set number of entries uh, into Comic Care, even for the early access, to make sure that all the kind of crowd management options still work properly. Uh, you can notice a lot on the floor that there are uh, there's tape out for all the queues, things like that. Lots of people walking around with uh, kind of advertisements for all their booths. Uh, I think here I will quickly fast forward to when I get to the booth. Uh, because it'll take a little bit. I think I waste a little bit of time on a map. Hang on. Oh no, I just get in I just get in line. Okay, here we go. So this is the visual arts booth. Uh, you can see there'll be people with kind of these standing signs that tell you um, what's on sale if you're still like kind of browsing, window shopping as it were. And you can see that there's you know queue management going on, crowd management. So I do want to point out that this thing in my hand right now is uh, the order sheet. So on the website, they'll have on the website for all their goods. I can't look it up now because I think it's down, uh, but I haven't checked yet. Um, on the website, they'll have all their goods listed with all the numbers as well. And then on the order sheet, they'll have those same numbers. So you can check already what numbers you want to buy. And then you can just go, yep, I want one of number 12 or whatever. Uh, in this case, uh, I hadn't made that far of a check, but I was pretty sure I was buying most of the clan and stuff, which I do have. Um, so I think what I end up buying, if I fast forward a little bit, because they didn't have much, I was really hoping they would have some of the more exclusive clanet art. They used to have um, kind of limited print run uh, framed art. Uh, kind of stuff that you put in your wall that looks really nice. I have one from the Clannet anniversary, the 20th anniversary, uh, I think on my wall of Nagiso and Ushio. That was pretty nice. Um, but here, I don't think they had anything too exciting in terms of Clannet merchandise. Um, so one of them, which I'm actually using right now, that I bought when we get there. Actually, I'll show you now before I get to the thing so you can see the, the buying process, I guess. So I got a... Ooh, ah, wonderful. So the filter kind of just fucks it up. But that's the um, that's the uh, mouse pad, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, a little bit expensive, but you know, that's how exclusive much is. Uh, I also bought the key calendar kind of memories um, or records, I guess is one way of putting it. Uh, so these are all the calendar images uh, that were printed for all the uh, Comic Cat uh, calendars from 2007 to 2022, uh, which is pretty neat if you never got to collect those calendars. I did get a key calendar one year, I think in 2015, uh, but I never managed to uh, pick up any other calendars. So that was really good to get. Uh, and then the last thing I got was like a little tote bag type thing uh, with the Dungle Daikozuku on it. And then uh, a key ring of a dragon dango, I believe, because it's the year of the dragon, uh, which it just is now, now that I'm, now that I'm recording this. Um, so that was all, basically all the goods I got, because it was all kind of related. 
Um, obviously, you don't have to go as hard on, on what you'd like uh, as I did. Um, but considering it's all kind of exquisite merch and I rarely get to go to Japan, um, you know, I felt it was worth it. So one thing that has improved over previous comic cats is that a lot of the a lot of the commercial booths now take card, uh, which is something that I hadn't realized until I'd gotten there, and I was like, oh, you guys all have you know mobile card readers and things like that. Uh, so I end up paying a lot of this with card um, instead of using cash because I use the cash more for the Dorjan circles, things like that, where they don't necessarily have that same technology. Which is still true for the Dorjan booths, yeah, that they don't have, um, they can't take card as uh, readily. Yeah, so I, this is really early in the morning. I didn't pick up uh, initially that she was asking for payment uh, just because I was zoned out. I just had the card out. And she's like, oh, she lied. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 payment, payment, yeah. Right card, please, thanks. Yeah, so they, they do tap, which is amazing, actually, by the way, that most of Japan, most of the big cities now do tap, uh, probably because of COVID. Uh, you can see that I still have to sign, which is a little bit odd, but that's Japan. So yeah, they'll take the water sheet from you. Put it in with all your stuff, because that's still... You might want to keep that, right? So they put everything back in there for you. You get a free magazine. Uh, and you get some free postcards. Uh, God, my Japanese is so bad there. But, um... At least pronunciation-wise. Uh, so... You saw I got a, I got a couple tokens. Uh, because they're running a little bit of a campaign. Um, where the tokens are kind of like yen coins that you put into a shrine, for example. So there's a cosplayer with, in like a Miko outfit. I don't know where she's meant to be from, uh, but you put it in, you get like an Omikuji out, which is like a fortune, um, and you know, you might win something or other. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I don't know. Sure. I'll, I'll take it. So one token is one Omikuji. Um, and you get to tie it up if you don't win anything. And we're back on the trail. So I've skipped forward a little bit. This is the Karakawa booth. Uh, you can see that I've just got a bunch of propaganda. I've got a bunch of marketing material. That's pretty normal. I'm looking at the Aniplex booth as well, which is massive. Um, Cause obviously Aniplex is giant. Uh, it's following up a lot of different corporations, but you know, that's a discussion for a different time. Uh, I'm still walking through all the corporate booths, trying to decide where to go to next. I figure Katakawa is probably my best bet, I think. Um... Yeah, so now I'm just wandering through the corporate halls. Um, and you can see, you know, the marketing doesn't really stop. Um, and I grab one of these bags here. Uh, just because they're really good bags. They're pretty huge. They fit basically everything. Um, and, you know, there's so many people walking around with them anyway, right? Um, so you kind of help them out. You help yourself out um, with being able to carry everything without feeling like things will break. Uh, that being said, I do feel like I should have brought more, st more bags. Uh, my backpack wasn't really sufficient. Um, but thankfully, I mean, you can just take the, the marketing bags uh, and you'll be okay. Uh, so here I am on a little bit of a trek uh, to the other commercial booths. Uh, I did stop. I believe this is... Yeah, so this is Fate Stay Night. So this is Type Moon. Uh, I did consider buying a calendar, but their calendars are bloody huge. Uh, and I didn't feel like taking it back home. Because uh, last time I took it home, it literally filled, like, my suitcase, pretty much. It was that kind of 
size, where it was just my entire suitcase, my entire check-in suitcase, um, in terms of its 2D size anyway. Um, so that was pretty hard to, to transport. Uh, again, I'm just being handed lots of catalogs. Uh, this time, this isn't a company per se, this is just a random, like, retailer who happens to have a store. Um, I think one of my friends wanted something from there, so I ended up grabbing something for them? Yeah, we'll get, that. We'll get some change out of it as well, I think. Yeah, so here I end up getting what my friend wanted, which I believe was the, um... Kusaria no Hitorigoto. I think it's a clear file from here. Oh no! I'm completely wrong. So it's still something for my friend. Um, she's a fan of uh, Konosuba in, in the past. Uh, so I thought the Chomsky uh, pass case was pretty cute. And then I also get the Eurocamp um, beanie, which I have. Because uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Eurocamp, obviously. So I still have that, that, uh, b and &E. uh, and this is also where I start putting in bigger notes, just to be able to get some, uh, change, because that way, um, I can use that change, the smaller, like, thousand yen notes instead of five thousand, uh, at different, uh, doujin circles and things like that for later on in the day. So we'll continue on, this is the Karakawa booth, and the Karakawa booth was also bloody huge. Um, I believe I'll start looking through the order pages soon, but they do actually have English speaking staff available, uh, which is pretty neat. Not something I've seen before at Comic Cat, um, and I think it is just because of the influx of um, international uh, attendees. Uh, thankfully, I don't really need it, uh, but you know, it is there. At least at the, at the Karakawa booth. That doesn't necessarily mean that they'll help you for other stuff in, in the convention. Uh, but at least for ordering from Karakawa, um, you can understand. Here, yeah, there's a massive order sheet. Um, I only got one thing, so I will uh, skip all the way through this. Karakawa was a whole bunch of different anime properties. Um, some of the items were a little bit more questionable than others, I've got to say. Certainly things that I would not buy. Um, not just because I'm not a fan of those, those series, but uh, the queue is quite long. Uh, <coughs> so this is like the backside of Karakawa, um, and you can see how long it would take um, if I just played the, the video at normal speed. Um, there was a massive queue from the back around the side at the right, and then finally you come up to the front. Um, one thing I will say is that they did have a Haruhi and, and uh, Lucky Star anniversary event going on this year because it's the 20th anniversary uh, in 2007 for Lucky Star. Um, so they kind of just merged the two. Uh, but at Karakawa, I got one thing only because there was only one thing they had that was of interest to me and that was the Lucky Star acrylic stickers there. Um, so they're stickers but they're fully acrylic so they're actually like uh, solid, and you can kind of stick them on whatever you want. I still haven't kind of decided where I want to put them, and they were also kind of expensive. I think they were about 4,000 yen for the pack, which is about 800 yen per thing. Um, so that's pretty expensive, uh, considering what else you can get um, for that kind of money, like a tapestry and things like that, which you can see kind of all across the side here of Karakawa. You could also buy Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and 3 on PS3, if you really wanted to, for about uh, $110, I think, Australian. Uh, I think it was 11,000 yen. So that's kind of cheap, <laughs> if you think about it, because you're getting two games for the price of one, essentially. Um, which I thought was just pretty funny. Uh, but you can see that the same process is happening. Um, the staff are just grabbing my order. And you don't really have to say anything as long as you fill out the order sheet correctly. Um, everything is kind of done there for you. Yeah, so she asked if I wanted a bag and I said yes because you can never get enough bags. <laughs> and then, you know, what I'm paying with. Alright, so I'm out of Katakawa. Um, and this is just kind of showing you 
This is Comic Care. These are the corporate booths. And at the Georgian Circles, it only gets more crowded, more crazy. Um, yeah, it's it's an experience. If you haven't gone and you know you like anime at all, really, I really highly suggest um, going. Even if it's for just the AM, if you don't want to get up at 4 or 5 AM or whatever, um, at least try and get there in the morning. Because by 2, 3 p.m., everything's gone. It's closing down. Because Comic Cat opens from 10, closes at 4 p.m., generally. Um, so try and get there in the morning um, and, and have a blast, really. Um, if you, you don't have to necessarily plan it out uh, like I did. Here, I'm just trying to find a cosplayer that I like. She said she was working at MiHoYo. Um, so I'm just trying to sneak in a picture. Um, I don't necessarily play the Mihoyo games, um, but I followed her from, from a little while back, from my first comic account, so I just wanted to snap a picture. Um, anyway, yeah, like you don't have to go all out, find the maps, etc. You don't have to line up for early access at 4, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., um, but just go and have fun, absorb the atmosphere, um, you know, buy a cup, buy some merch, buy some Dorgins, Um because it is one of kind. Um, these kinds of events in Japan. Um, there's nothing else quite like it. Uh, unless I think you go to like, um, the, the big, uh, like AX in Los Angeles is obviously like massive as well. Uh, Anime Expo. But, um, yeah. Alright, so I'm in the East Halls now. I've kind of fast forwarded through all the like walking and stuff around like that. Um, because I think, I because I already knew, like, on the first day I was going to be stuck in the commercial hall, so I didn't really think about, um, the Dorgen Circles very much. Um, but, you know, they sell more than just, you know, books and manga and stuff like that. You can find all sorts of different cool things. Uh, and in this case, I ended up finding a couple, some cool, cool keychains, uh, actually. Um, which I thought were pretty neat. So these are, like, replicas of, of different, uh, guns. Um, so I, I picked up a few, uh, obviously they're not real, and they are keychains, but I thought they were pretty neat, uh, just cause, like, they kinda, uh, are laid together wood, uh, I guess is one way to put it. Um, and they're pretty accurate for, for the medium that they're working in. Uh, I think I also came here because the stall next to them, uh, was doing kind of like, a rubber band launches, I guess is one way of putting them. So like guns where you could like shoot rubber bands at your friends. Uh, but I, I ended up not buying any because they were kind of expensive. Um, and they weren't really what I was looking for at the end. I thought they would be more sort of replica-y, uh, but they ended up being more just contraptions that, that throw rubber bands at people. Uh, we're picking up some other knickknacks. If you're looking for, you know, cute stuff, keychains, uh, pen holders, all kinds of random stuff. There's there's all kinds of things at Comic Cat. Um, it's everything that's made by other people. It's a giant artist alley. Um, you know, for example, here, he, like my friend's buying a piece of toast. Um, it, it's great. And that is it for day one. So, yeah, that's most of the safe for work stuff that I bought at Comic Cat. I might go through the artists that I ended up buying stuff from uh, in a different video. Uh, but I thought it would be a nice introduction and a good welcome back to the channel. Uh, just to show you off, you know, a little bit of Comic Cat footage, prove that I did go to Japan. Um, and uh, not leaving you guys high and dry without anything. Uh, to watch. Um, so if you have any other things that you'd like to see, uh, I'll probably go through, like I said, a VOD review more thoroughly about kind of my preparation and um, the steps of getting into Comic Cat uh, on the on the day, and then also how I exited that kind of thing, just in case people are uh, a little bit uh, nervous about that kind of thing. So in the end, Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I apologize for not uh, uploading for a while, um, but I should have, you know, a few videos out uh, fairly quickly uh, about Comic Cat, my recent trip to Japan, um, and uh, other tips and tricks for your Japanese tourism, especially now that Japan's opening. Everyone's going anyway. 
Um, so thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.